friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Vaughn Fawn's Den Sweet Den, Hive 5, A Bug Deal, Really High 5, and Jump for Joy. So I have stamped the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with my bears, and I wanted them to be black bears. That's the bear that's most common where I live in Pennsylvania, but it's so fun that you can color them in a variety of different ways. But I'm going to use my toner grays for them today. I'm using T3, T5, and T7. Starting out with the baby bear, and I laid my shadows down the left side of his body with the T7, and that is just because I like to leave the face as the most highlighted area of the body so that you can really see the features. So since his face is turned up toward the right, his shadows are going to go on the left. So once I have the T5 laid in as my mid-tone, I'm going to come in with the T3 and fill in any remaining white space. Then I'm going to skip over to the mama bear and color her in with the same tones so they can look like they're part of the same family. And I will also be doing a second layer on these bears off screen. Since there was quite a bit of coloring today, a lot of images to tackle, I decided to do that second layer off screen but that just really increases the saturation of your markers. It also really helps to smooth out the blend. You can kind of see on that baby bear, the blend between the T7 and the T5 on his back isn't perfect. So going back over that a second time is going to really help that out. So yeah, it's definitely something that I recommend doing if you've got the time. It really does make a huge difference with your coloring and the final result of your images. So on the mom bear, I have flipped my light source. I want to keep the light on her face, like I mentioned. So her shadows are going down her back, which is on the right hand side and her highlight will be more toward the left. Since she's turned a little bit more centered than the baby bear, her shadows are gonna be on both the right and the left actually, but more heavy handed on the right since she is turned more toward the left. So I'm gonna keep the area around her face nice and light and also her belly, the tops of her legs, anywhere that the sun would naturally be hitting the end of her tail and all of that. So once I have her filled in completely, I am also going to use these shades to just add some shading to the center of the beehive to color in that little opening there. And I'm putting the T7 down at the very bottom for that, the bottom right hand side there, and blending up toward the top left with the lighter two shades. And now I have done my second layer. You can see what a difference that has made. For the muzzle of the baby bear and the mama bear, I'm gonna use E21, E23, and E25. And since they're both small areas, I decided to do them both at once rather than switching back and forth between the markers. I'm also going to do the little wooden spoon that goes with the bee jar. I'm not exactly sure what that's called, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So I just used the same shades, but used a bit more of the E21 to make it look a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to switch up and take away the E21, add in the E27 to do this large branch. So I'm adding that E27 on the underside of the branch and creating some shadow there since the sun would be hitting the top of the branch. And then I'm going to blend up with the E25, just following the curve of the way that that branch is drawn and making sure to leave at least a little sliver of white space for the highlight shade on each of those smaller parts of the branch as well. I'm gonna fill those in with the E23. And then I'm gonna let this branch dry for maybe 30 seconds to a minute 
and then I'm going to add some E29 to add some wood grain detail, just doing some little circles and lines to add some texture and give it a bit more definition. So then I am going to move on to coloring in my beehive and I wanted to go with some golden yellows for that and even some sandy brown tones. So I went with YR20, YR21, YR23, and then E33. I'm adding the E33 first. It's going to be under the darkest yellow shade, the YR23. It's just going to make it even more golden toned. I wanted that to really be rich and dark so we get that definition between each of those little lines there. So I'm just going around the bottom of the hive and also around the door and adding the shading on the right hand side to match the shading that is in the opening there. I went a little bit outside the lines so I cleaned that up with my colorless blender and now I'm going in with my mid-tone for the yellow shades which is YR21 and just pulling that YR23 out a bit and carrying that into this mid-tone so I get a nice smooth blend. So I'm going to work my way all the way down to the very bottom row and then I'm going to fill in the rest of that white space using the YR20. Just brushing over that real quick and easy to fill that all in. Then I'm going to color in the honey jar. So you can color this in a variety of ways because it could be a honey pot. It doesn't have to be a glass jar, but I wanted mine to kind of show that golden honey inside there. So I just use those same marker tones to color that in, adding some shading around the label and filled that in. And then I'm going to switch to my bees. So I'm going to use Y13, Y15, and Y17 for their bodies. Since the black stripes are already stamped solid, I don't need to do any of the black. I can just go over them completely with these golden yellow tones. And by the way, these bees are from the Lawn Fawn card kit that came out recently. It is unfortunately sold out, but I definitely wanted to take the chance to use it. I know a lot of you guys picked it up as well and were curious to see the stamp set in action or the kit in action. So I hope you guys can understand that. And hopefully some of these items will be released at a later date. And if not, there are other bees in different Lawn Fawn sets, so you could make a similar card. There's not a beehive or a honey jar, but you could use the jam jar from the strawberry set, or there's substitutions you could make. The beehive is the one that would be harder to do. So I'm going to add some rosy cheeks to my bears using R22 and R20. And then I'm going to add some rosy cheeks to my bees using R20 and R11. And that way I can have the darker colors show up on the darker bears, but it's not too heavy on the bees. And I'm going to color another little pennant banner there that's going to go around the beehive. That is also from the High Five stamp set that came in the kit. I'm going to color in the ribbon on the little gift over on the right hand side with these pink tones and also some stripes on the party hats. So I'm just going to skip around and color in various objects that kind of pull all the color palette together that I wanted to use on this card. I'll do some of the streamers on top of the hats as well and then I'm going to switch to a new combo. I'm going to keep the R11 and R20 but add in the R000 so I get a little bit of a lighter pink tone and I'm going to do more stripes on the party hats and another one of the pennant banners. 
just doing those all at once. Like I said, it's quick and easy. That way I don't have to switch back and forth between the markers. It's especially nice to do this on smaller images because you don't have to worry about that ink drying back too much while you're working with it. I'm also gonna do the label of the honey jar to tie in that light pink somewhere else on the card. And then I'm gonna to switch to some red tones. I wanted it to be more of like a cranberry red. So I went with R35, R37, and R39. And again, I'm gonna do more of the stripes on the party hats and the pendant banners. I wanted to tie in a very specific color palette that I had in mind that I just thought would look really nice with these images. So that's why I'm making sure to utilize this color palette in as many places as possible on the card. I also use those cranberry shades for the ribbon on the top of the honey jar and for the wrapper on the bottom of the cupcake. So I'm just gonna finish up this last image and then I'm gonna switch up my color palette once again. And this time I'm gonna go with some dusty blue tones, kind of like baby blues, but a little bit darker. And that is B000, B41, and B45. So it's gonna give me a little pop of something cool in the mix of all these warm yellows and pinks and reds. So I'm gonna finish off the party hats and the pennant banner. I'm also gonna add a little bit of that B000 to the B's wings and to the little speech bubble that I stamped Happy B Day into. That is gonna be my sentiment for the front of the card. I'm gonna color in the little fabric topper to the honey jar with these shades. And then I'm also going to color in the gift wrap over on the far right. So I'm gonna start with that B45 down at the bottom, blend up with the B41 about another third of the way, and then the top third, I'm gonna use that B000. So my last combo is going to be G40, G43, and G46. I needed some greens in here to color in these little leaves. I did forget to color in the little party horn in that one bee's mouth, so I went back to my red combo. But I'm gonna switch to the greens now to do the leaves. I'm gonna do the leaf on top of the cupcake and also the two single leaves over on the top left. And I did color some additional leaves off screen. They just didn't really fit on this panel. So I did those off screen, but you'll see exactly what I did for those with these two here. They're the same exact two leaves. I just stamped them multiple times. So I'm gonna fill those in and then I'm going to trim all of these images out with their matching dies. For my focal panel, I've cut down two pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. This one is using the Lawn Fawn Small Stitch Rectangle Stackables and then the other one is using the grassy border. I'm gonna set the grassy border aside for now and work on the background. I'm gonna use the cloudy stencil and some salvage patina distress oxide ink and create a little bit of a sky. So I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down, turning that stencil. And I'm gonna put that ink right at the very edge of the stencil so I make sure to get some nice definition as I work my way up. And then I use lighter pressure so that it gets a little bit softer and more cloudy there as it goes up towards the next cloud formation, but you still get that white outline of the cloud above it. And then I just turn my stencil and continue working my way down the panel. And if you run out of cloud formations and need some different ones, you can flip the stencil over to the other side so you actually get eight different cloud formations with one four-sided stencil. I'm gonna add a little bit of ink down toward the bottom just in case any of that shows through so it's not so stark white. 
and then I'm going to add a little bit of splatter in the background by pressing that ink onto an acrylic block, adding a little bit of water to it, and then thinning that out with a paintbrush, tapping it off the edge of the block and getting a nice splatter of dots. And I did that from the bottom left toward the top right hand side there. I'm going to set that panel aside to dry and work on the grassy border. For that one, I'm starting with some Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink. I'm being really careful with this one because it's very easy to bend those delicate little grasses. So I'm more pouncing the ink on as I get toward the top. I can blend a little bit better down toward the bottom. And then I'm going to darken that up with some Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink. It's just a little bit of a darker green. And I'm going to add that in the same way, kind of like um, pressing down right below those grasses and pulling up rather than pulling down toward the bottom as I normally would, just to keep those grasses from getting bent and making sure that I blend out the transition between those two shades adding more definition if I need to with a darker coat of ink. And then I'm also going to do some splatter detail on this one so that everything matches. So again, I wanna keep that splatter detail just nice and fine. So that's why I'm tapping it off the block rather than just flicking it in the air. That way you would get some larger and various sized drops. And then I'm gonna add some gold paint with my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors. And once again, I'm working from the top right toward the bottom left on both of those. I'm gonna be following a card sketch. And so the pattern of the dots is going to help emphasize that. And here is the card sketch that I'm using. It is for our current Lawn Fanatics Challenge, if you're watching this when the video goes live. So now I'm going to pull in some pattern paper from the Stripes and Sprinkles 6x6 six six pad. This is also from the High Five kit, so it is no longer available at this time. But like I said, I really hope they release this at a later date because I really love this one. I pulled out two different prints from this pad. I'm using a yellow stripe and a pink polka dot and I die cut those both with the Lawn Fawn large stitch rectangle stackables. I'm going to glue the pink polka dot print down to my card front. That is a sticky note card base using Lawn Fawn cardstock and it is a standard A2 size. It's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall with a top fold adding some liquid glue to the back of that pattern paper and then making sure it's on the card nice and straight by lining up all four corners. And then I'm going to add the yellow stripe going across the center. So I made sure it was nice and wide so you get a nice glimpse of that yellow stripe on the outside edges because you'll only see a little bit of it. And then I'm going to glue my grass down at the bottom of my seam. I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of that focal panel so I can add some dimension to my card, give it a bit of lift. So I'll pull off those release papers, line that up in the center, and then I'll press that down into place. Then I'm going to start adhering my images and I'm going to use the tree first since the positioning of that kind of determines where everything else is going to go. So I'm adding that to the top right side because we're going to have a nice cluster there to match that card sketch. And I'm just going to trim off the excess that is hanging over the focal panel. And then to that, I want to add some of the leaves that I have colored and die cut so that it looks more like a summertime scene. I didn't want it to just be a bare branch. So I'm gonna add a variety of leaves to the end. Some of them are gonna get one large and one small. Some of them will get two small and one large. And then the bottom one, I believe, just gets one large leaf because it's gonna be partially covered up. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but only one of the leaves would have shown. So I just went ahead and added one there and I kind of tilted it a little bit up because like I said, something's gonna cover the rest of it. So it'll look like more leaves are there. 
I'm going to add my beehives that is hanging from that tree branch, just getting that positioned exactly where I want it to go. And then I'm going to take my mama bear and I have tucked that honey jar into her little paws. There is a die that comes with the coordinating die set for the bear that cuts out her hands so that you can add things into her arms. So I just put the honey jar there and then added a bit of glue beneath that to hold it in place. And then I can add some more liquid glue to the back of her. I'm going to place her more toward the center of the bottom of the card because if you remember the sketch, it's kind of going in a diagonal stripe, just like the yellow stripes on the pattern paper. So the baby bear is going to kind of complete that diagonal by going all the way over to the left. I'm going to decorate the beehive with that little bunting banner because I did want this to be a birthday card, so I wanted it to look like a celebration is happening. And then I'm gonna have some of these bees swarming around the hive. So I've got the one with the party horn, and then I've got another one that I'm gonna add at the very top right corner. I'm gonna put the little honey spoon, honey wand into the baby bear's hand. Just kind of tucking that under so it looks like he's holding on to that. And then I've got the little cupcake that is going to be like a little honey cake sitting over next to Mama because I'm imagining that it's Mama Bear's birthday in this little scene here. Baby Bear has got a little present to give to her and I'm going to add the sentiment up toward the top of the scene there, kind of overlapping the tree branch. And then my bee with the party hat is going to go right below that. So you can see what I mean. He was covering up where any other leaves would have gone. I'll add a party hat to the top of baby bear's head. And then the last one to mama bear's head. So everybody has their own little um, party gear, except for that one bee at the very top. But that's okay. He's got a smile on his face, so he can be celebrating too. I always like to finish up my cards on the inside with some more images and an additional sentiment. I think it just really ties the outside of the card to the inside and gives your recipient like a little extra surprise. So I'm stamping a few more images and another sentiment that says you're as sweet as honey with Lawn Fawn Sunflower Ink. And I did stamp that down a bunch of times because yellow on yellow can sometimes not show up really well. I wanted to make sure that was nice and bold. I'm going to finish off this card by using the clear glaze pen to add some sparkle to my card. This also came in the High Five kit, but I do believe this one is also available separately. So if that's something you're looking for to add a little bit of sparkle to your cards, I think that one you can definitely still pick up. So I added that to my bees wings and I also put it on the ribbon on my gift. I added just a touch of it to the party hats, just kind of like a little line up the side where it's more heavily shaded. And also on the cupcake wrapper. And I put it on the ribbon of the honey jar as well. So there'll be a little bit of sparkle that'll catch the light when you tip this card. So I'll show you how that looks right now and give you an up close look at all that detail and another peek at the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know, did you pick up this kit or not? If not, like I said, there are substitutions that you can make. All of the products that I use will be listed and linked in the description bar below the video, so you can click down there if you'd like to check that out. Here are also two extra videos I thought might also interest you, and I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.